regularly brings Israeli politicians here, thinkers, writers, to speak to uh, local UK Jewish audiences, show various faces of Israel. Are you going to be inviting Professor Eldad to come and speak in a Yachad uh, <laughs> seminar anytime soon? Um, well, I actually just wanted to respond to something you said. Um, the elephant in the room. So uh, let me tell you an anecdote from my family. My sister is one of your elephants in the room. She's intermarried. And what makes it much harder for her to persuade her husband that they will bring up their kids Jewish is the debate that goes around my family on a Friday night at Shabbat dinner about the state of Israel. Because for her to be able to explain to him that Israel, which is a central part of my family's Jewish identity, um, anchor, whatever the words are you want to use, for her to be able to explain to him why the country behaves the way it behaves, why it chooses to make decisions that feel so different to the world in which we live in here, that, that um, reflects such a different set of values, it's not to do with asking you to change. It's actually saying the Israel that we grew up understanding, believing in, being asked to support, wanting to support, is the Israel in the Declaration of Independence, one that believes in democracy, equality, and justice. And for my sister and her husband, when they have the debate about how to bring up their half-Jewish children, how Israel behaves is part a very live part of that debate. But and Israel the, is making it much harder. But Hannah, the question basically that Professor Dad is, I, th I think is saying is that we're not going to change. You, British, parts of British Jewry who don't like Israel, which, which is not changing, have to deal with that. Whether it's going to make somebody not want to bring up his, ch his children in the Jewish tradition or just be indifferent to Israel is another question. Can you deal with an Israel which won't change? Just short of 50% of people voted for a different vision of Israel in the last election. This notion that your version of Israel is the Israel that's not going to change, that is going to be forever, I'm afraid it does not ring true when you look at the statistics. So... <laughs> we, 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 those of us here in the diaspora that care about Israel, that care about her future, that care about a Jewish and democratic state and the state that I think Zippy Livni painted so well just earlier today, and he, uh, you know, just to add, a state which, does, which in Zippy Livni's words does not need settlements for its security, uh, that is the state that we will continue to fight for. And the people inside Israel that um, profess those values are the people that I think many of us here in the diaspora want to continue to get behind. Maybe we'll lose the battle, but I think if we lose the battle, Israel is going to lose the diaspora, and you cannot expect us ad infinitum to support a a vision of a country that does, is so far away from our own Jewish and democratic values. And that's the choice you inside Israel can choose to make, and we can't stop you. But I think that the long-term consequences will be that there will be a gap and a chasm between us and you, which is irrevocable and irreparable. And that's not something that I, or I think many people in this room, want to see happen. Thank you, Han. Efrat. <laughs> Uh, unlike, uh, I think, Professor Dad, who says, we're not going to change for you, you are part of groups and movements working for society and change in Israel. And I, I, I wonder how much, how much consideration, how much is it important, the demand and the expectations of Jews in diaspora on the work that you do, because you are connected to, to groups in diaspora, on the work that you do when you try and achieve society change in Israel. Is it a consideration at all? Should it be a consideration in your opinion? Well, I think it's a consideration, it definitely is. Um, however, I think that the tone of the things that you just said basically is what makes it difficult for Israelis to take diaspora Jews into consideration, because there's a feeling like um, this is a uh, conditional love, and that uh, stands of part of diaspora Jews, many diaspora Jews, their um, sense of um, you know standing behind Israel is conditional. So long as Israel, Israeli government, the policy is the policy that we can stand behind, we will give you our unconditional support. However, Israeli policy that we do not support takes its toll on our stand, standing behind Israel. And the, the sentence being said, um, we find it more and more difficult to stand behind Israeli policy and therefore don't expect, expect us to support Israel when your policy is not the one that we support, is one that makes Israelis 
it, it makes it very difficult for Israelis to take your point of view under consideration because I think I'm part of many, many groups in Israel who are activists for change on many, many different topics. And you know what? Israel is not just right and left. There are so many more issues in Israel that people are fighting for and trying to change. And I feel like, for me, I have a lot of criticism about Israeli government from here and from there. You know what? And I had a lot of criticism about Israeli government and policy, even before the age of Netanyahu. You know, n not everything was perfect no, until really? the age of Netanyahu, I want to tell you. And it, it, the, the notion that until 10 years ago, everything was perfect in Israel and there was no criticism about anything that's going on there, and now everything is just downhill and nothing good is happening, is just something that's not true. And I e feel like... Everything went downhill from the end of the British mandate. I think since then... <laughs> yeah, let's bring can, it back. We can agree that it's... Right, let's bring back the British mandate. You know, t I hope T.P. Livni's not listening. So I'm um, talking about her parents as freedom fighters. Um, so I feel like many young Israelis specifically feel that the um, way diaspora Jews look at Israel is not an unconditional love. And I think that for us, many young Israelis who have criticism and are trying to change things in Israel, one thing is for sure, every election that ends up not as we would like it to end up, we do not turn off the light and say, you know what, Batzlacha, good luck to you because we know we're not we're not gonna stay around. For us, it's an existential Israel is not a core part of our identity. It's an existential part of our identity. We don't have we do not have the luxury of saying if Israeli policy is not something I support, then I'm not gonna support Israel anymore. We don't have that luxury. That's a luxury, you know, excuse me for saying it in a blunt way. That's a luxury that you have sitting on the other side of the ocean and saying, you know what, if you do not change your policy, we're not gonna support you anymore because you have your everyday life and you have your national identity. And just for Israelis, we don't have that luxury. And I think that's what makes it very difficult for young Israelis to look at diaspora Jews and say, you know what, you're very, um, there's a Yiddish expression, feinschmeckerim. You know, if we act like you want us to act, then you're su you'll support us. And if we don't, then you don't. So you know what? Good luck to you. I think and that's... I think, and I think if we start to speak Yiddish now, it's time to ask for a few questions from the audience. Uh, we've got time, I think, for two or three questions and then uh, kind of a closing uh, thing. Yes, uh, so uh, there, there Grace, uh, sh a shirt in the middle. Yes. Just um, if people can just wait till the microphone comes to them, the roving mic, and then...